Hi, how are you good students? Welcome once again to the Blossoms of the Savannah, this time around themes, and we're going to be looking themes in chapter 3. The narration is done by none other than Mr. Sherlock. Stay put, and by the end of this particular session, I hope that you get meaning and sense out of the text. I would uh, suggest that you pause within the video. Uh, it would be good, if I were you, that if I need to get the best of these, I'll be pausing here and there, interjecting, so that I can take the most important uh, clues that will help me personally uh, in my exams. So, good students, stay put and see if you can get something out of this. So they were good students, we are going to dive deep straight into it without wasting time. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Themes. What are themes? Themes are issues that are consistent in a, in a creative work. Themes are issues that are consistent in a creative work. They are subcategories or subtopics of the subject matter or the main idea in a work of art. They constitute the entire message the writer wishes to put across to his or her readers. Therefore, themes are the messages put across by a writer in a work of art. There are major and minor themes. Major themes cut across the text and are the main ideas that the writer intends to pass to the readers. Minor themes are minor ideas which are still important in the text. Positive Nasilian culture, strong traditions. Culture refers to the customs, habits, and behaviors that characterize a society's, communities, or nation's way of life. On the other hand, traditions form part of the culture of a people and are handed down from one generation to the next. Positive aspects of culture in Nasila are important in holding people together. There are many aspects of Nasilian culture which are positive. The songs the young people and children sing during the Olekailo's homecoming ceremony attest to the rich Ma culture. The narrator says, and I quote, From the children's performance, it was evident that the cherished Nasilian traditional dance would stand the test of time. And that, you can find it on page 44.
The writer says that the party was full of pomp and gaiety. This is brought out by the jewelry worn by the guests such as ivory, beads, colored lessos, kangas, and shukas. You can find that on page 47. All of these are testing to the rich cultural heritage of the Ma. Generosity as a badge is seen in Simiren who invites all uh, those present in the party to savor or to savor his brother's lavish hospitality. Food and drinks are served in generous measures to all those present. Ole, Ole Musanka, an elder who blesses Ole Kaila's home, glorifies Ma's culture saying that it was the blood and marrow that gave sustenance to the body. According to him, home is Ma, Nasila family and children. His only problem is that he supports FGM, a cultural practice that does not assist women in any way. Ration and Tayo go to stay at their uncle's place for some time. They witness some positive aspects of communal life and unity at their uncle's home. We are told that life and work in that home was communal, although each other had her own house, each mother, sorry, had her own house and cooked her own food. All grown-up daughters helped each one of them. That is um, on page 148. There is well laid down chain of command with the first wife being the deputy to the angle. There are hardly any disagreements and verges of selflessness and sharing are emphasized. That is on page 149. And when Ole Kailo's daughters are assaulted by two men, the communion way of life comes in handy. All the Ilmulelian men join him in pursuing the men and meeting punishment on them. He is not left alone to deal with the matter. During Ole Kailo's homecoming ceremony, young men and women from the clan work together to make the day successful. Ole Kailo is touched after discovering that brotherhood, honor, and selflessness still existed in Asila. And this makes him swear that he would never abandon the culture of his people or live outside his clan. Page 14.
Therefore, Nasila culture clearly defined relationships. The founder had intended that the culture would regulate the lives of the people. It charted out the way of everyone from cradle to the grave. It defined relationships. It created laws that governed the ownership of property and settled disputes. It did not discriminate. It did not favor anyone over the other. It gave everyone a chance to live a full life. It protected everyone within its confines and provided cleansing procedures for those who defiled it. It was simply a cherished way of life for all the Ma people. Page 118. Mama Milanoi appreciates Nasila culture, which spares her nephew from death. She, and I quote, began to see the wisdom of the Ma founder, who ensured that justice was always tampered with mercy. Page 163. According to Nasilan culture, if a man sought refuge between the legs of an old man, he was to be spared despite the crime committed. Anybody who violates cultural values of Nasila culture is faced with laid down punishment. Both Ntara Muyo and Lante, who had attempted to reparation, and Tayo are forced to pay fines to the girls and their father, and somehow justice is done. The two boys had been fined two heifers each and Ntara Muyo, an extra heifer to cover the shame that he had uh, occasioned by accosting his own sister, that is page 164. Mama Milano also reminisces that the old aspect of our culture which gave room for Ma's action in case somebody misbehaved and went against the expected conduct. A case in point is where an old man got infatuated by a girl of 14 years. When women realized it, they attacked the man, stripped him naked and beat him to death. That served as a detractor to any other man who would have such intentions. Mama Milanoi wonders where such good aspects of Nasila culture had gone, for they would shield her daughters from being forced to marry an old man like Olusudoru. Page 115 to 117.
A girl was always protected from men with evil intentions. Girls were kept away from male visitors in their homes, and there was hardly any interaction between fathers and daughters. Page 175. The rich man culture had different types of love. There is Elangatare, where boys did anything possible to win girls' admiration. The Elangatare love included feats by boys such as killing lions and fending people and their cattle from their enemies. There is also a Patureishi type of love where a girl and a boy were allowed to have a love affair alongside the conventional love. Such boys were the darlings of the girls and a song of praise would be composed by the girlfriend in praise of the valerious deeds of her boyfriend. That is on page 124 to 125. This relationship ended in marriage after a marriage ceremony. On the other hand, the patureishi did not end in marriage. It was meant to check the conduct and behavior of young people and keep them disciplined. That is on page 126. Uh, good students, these makes up our first theme in chapter 3 or the themes in chapter 3 one of the themes in chapter 3 positive masculine culture or traditions for now is an adios we meet next time round and i wish you the very best in your exams